Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We're so thankful that you dropped in on us for worship on today. Uh, we are going to jump into the Word of God. Uh, we're dealing with Jeremiah, uh, the 17th chapter. We're looking at the 5th through the 8th verses. And we're just trying to see how we can flourish in the presence of God. Brothers and sisters, enjoy the worship service and enjoy the choir to come. And we pray that God blesses you with a word from on high. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Been my 
Far from the peaceful shore, far from the peaceful shore, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the water lifted me now safe and mine now safe and mine now safe and mine now safe and mine now safe and now safe and mine Jesus hung on a cross that my poor soul would not be lost. I love him. I thank him. I praise him. And I thank him. And I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. If I had a thousand tongues, I could not thank him enough. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Thereby sinners plunge, lose all their guilty stain, lose their guilty stain, lose their guilty stain. I love you, 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 I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With my hands lifted up and my mouth full of praise, I will extol thee, O oh God. You're worthy. 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 Of oh, my praise. singing, you're worthy of my shouting, you're worthy of my hand clap, you're worthy of my leaping, of my teeping, of my keeping, so worthy, so worthy, so worthy, so worthy. Thank you, Jesus. With an unseen power And he keeps me My God keeps me From all sin 
Don't you know that he changes me from day to day as I walk, as I walk along this But since I met Jesus, and since he blessed this old soul of mine, it makes me want to run on and shout. Since I met Jesus, there's been a burning, oh, such a burning, deep down. Don't you know that he holds me with an unseen power, and he keeps me, my God keeps me. Walk 
Don't you know you love it? God bless you. It's now time for the Word of God, and I welcome you uh, as we prepare to preach God's Word. Uh, let us go before God in prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your power, and God, we thank you for your provision. God, we pray now that uh, as you talk through me, Lord God, that someone's life can be changed and someone's heart can be mended. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O oh Lord, my strength, our strength, my Redeemer, our Redeemer. Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us go. If you would, turn to the old canon of your Bibles. Turn to the old canon uh, to one of the major prophets, uh, Jeremiah. We want to turn to one of the major prophets, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. And we will read the 5th through the 8th verses. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. The 5th through the 8th verses. There you will find words very similar to these. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in a wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a sand land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, it leaves, its leaves are always green. And just for a moment, I want to talk to you, use as a framework for the time that we share together prosperity in God's presence. Prosperity in God's presence. Prosperity in God's presence. Brothers and sisters, there are a lot of things in life that can give us momentary happiness but as time moves with swift transition, those things that bring you momentary happiness can and will fade. I'm reminded of a Chinese parable uh, that pointed back to the ancient times where there was an old woodcutter who went to the mountain almost every day to cut wood. It was said that this old man was a stubborn hoarder of gold and that he cared more about the economy. Oh, 
more about gold, rather, than, than he did about other things and life itself. One day in the wilderness, a tiger sprang at him, and though he ran, he could not escape. And the tiger carried him off in his mouth. The woodcutter's son saw his father's danger, his father was in danger, and he ran to save him. Before he ran off to save his father, he grabbed his long hunter's knife and finally caught up with the tiger. And when he caught up with the tiger, to his dismay, his father was not hurt because the tiger held him by his clothes. But the old woodcutter saw his son, who was about to save him, but in order to save him, he had to take his knife and stab the tiger. He called out to his son, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, before you stab the tiger, Please do the tiger no harm. Do not bring harm or do not stick the tiger skin because I just believe that we can get uh, a great amount of gold for the tiger's skin. Don't kill him. Don't poke holes in him. And brothers and sisters, what happened was that while the son was listening to the father's instruction, the tiger suddenly dashed off into the forest, carrying the old man where the sun could not reach him. And he was soon killed. The man who was telling the story, a wise man uh, who told the story again, said, ah, this man's logic was foolish. His love for money was stronger than his love for life itself. Brothers and sisters, never allow anything to preoccupy your heart. Never allow anything to preoccupy your mind and uh, get your soul off focus to such a degree that you lose sight of life and cause your own demise. Might I suggest to you this morning that while you, uh, that when you stray from the presence uh, and the precepts of God, when you stray away from maintaining your relationship with God, when you stray from nurturing uh, your relationship with the Savior, it is at that point when you choose to devise your own demise. There are so many of us, brothers and sisters, uh, around today that choose to devise our own demise. Such is the case of our text today. The prophet Jeremiah was preaching to the people at Judah. He was warning them that they had lost focus of the true source of life. He, they had traded their trust in God for partnership and partisanship with political powers. Jeremiah warned them that if they did not turn back to God, catastrophe was on the way and their demise was close at hand. Brothers and sisters, there's a peculiar parallel here because it was the people of Judah uh, who were prone to trust their political allies in such a way that they would lean on them and lean on the arm of human partnership instead of depending upon the power of an almighty God. And I want to pause parenthetically and say, brothers and sisters, just as Jeremiah said, that it is important not to blindly place our trust and confidence in political allies, 
particularly, brothers and sisters, those who engage in the necropolitics such as the Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick who says that old people should volunteer to die to save the economy. I wish I had some help in here. In other words, brothers and sisters, we ought to trust in the Lord more than we trust into our political friends. Brothers and sisters, Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes says it's like this, that they are more concerned with the wealth of the economy than the health of humanity. In this season of exaggeration, in this season of deception, in this season of disinformation, distortion, misconception, brothers and sisters, I suggest to you that we are in need of divine illumination. Therefore, Jeremiah addresses his people with the word of God. And I share this with you, brothers and sisters, during this time where no one trusts and everyone doubts, we need a word from God. Verse 5, Jeremiah makes clear to us as he says, this is what the Lord said. I'm about to shout in here by myself, brothers and sisters. He says, this is is what the Lord says. Sometimes again, in this missio-theistic society, when everyone doubts God and the authenticity of the church, we need to be reminded of what the word of the Lord says. Jeremiah didn't give his own opinion. Jeremiah didn't propose his own preferences. Brothers and sisters, he didn't offer an alternative fact, but he relies on the truth of the word of God. And brothers and sisters, in this world, in this postmodern and modernistic society, we need to trust in the word of God. That's why he says, this is what the Lord says. He says, thus saith the Lord. The divine denotation here is that there is guarantee in God's word. I'm getting ready to shout by myself today because in this world where everything is uncertain, it's good to have a guarantee. It's good to have a guarantee in the word of God. Well, someone may be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, what in the world is a guarantee? Well, the dictionary, the Random House Dictionary says that a guarantee is a promise. A guarantee is an assurance. A guarantee is a promise, especially in writing. These times of uncertainty, it is important for us to have a guarantee. I remember, brothers and sisters, as I was walking through the mall once, I, I went in, I like to buy shoes, brothers and sisters, and when I was buying shoes, uh, there was this sock uh, uh, seller that said, I'll sell you some socks. Uh, it's Bumba socks. I'll sell you some socks, and those socks have a lifetime guarantee. He says, if your socks uh, become ripped, you can bring your socks back and we'll give you some new, a new pair of socks. If you get a hole at the heel of your socks, you got a guarantee that we can, you can bring your socks back and I'll give you a new pair. But brothers and sisters, as I thought about it, I said, how in the world can socks have a lifetime guarantee? Because it is not promised that Bumble will be there always. But I share with you, brothers and sisters, that we serve a God that can give you an eternal guarantee. We serve a God that can give you more than a lifetime guarantee. We serve a God that can stand on and by his word. We serve a God that his word is true. We serve a God that his word never fails. I'm reminded, brothers and sisters, of also George Zimmer. I'm not talking about George Zimmerman, but I'm talking about George Zimmer. If you remember George Zimmer as a child, I grew up watching TV. I loved to buy suits, and I wanted to be a handsome and a, a debonair man. 
And this person, this George Zimmer, was an iconic spokesman. He was the founder and the face of Men's Warehouse. And for over 40 years, as he built a multi-billion dollar corporation from the ground up, he would come on television and say that you're going to like the way you look, I guarantee it. All of the men who like suits, you remember that. He says, you're going to like the way you look, I guarantee. But nevertheless, while he founded, developed, and branded a multi billion dollar corporation, life seemed to happen while he was building. Life seemed to happen and brothers and sisters, sometimes life can void our warranty because in 2013 he was fired from his own company that he built from the ground up, leaving him with a guarantee that was good for nothing. I wish I had some help in here, brothers and and sisters, sometimes we can get in a place and a position in life where it just seems like our earthly guarantee is not enough. I mean, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said it like this on CNN on Thursday afternoon. He says, life can sometimes knock you on your rear end. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in this world of breach, in this world of cyber hackers, in this world of constant renege, in this world of uncertainty, there is nothing like having a real guarantee. There is nothing like having something to hang on. There is nothing like gripping your feet on the solid rock. There is nothing like standing on the rock of the solid word of God. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing like having the guarantee of God's word. And brothers and sisters, I share this with you. I'm so glad that in this world of falter, we have something that we can stand on because God's word will never fail. I know this because scripture reaffirms and affirms us, says God's word will never fail. Brothers and sisters, Isaiah 55 and 11 says that my word will never come back void. Isaiah 40 and 8, the word of God says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. I'm so glad that in Matthew 24 and 35 it says heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall never pass away. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad that I have something that I can hang on to, and that is the word of God. I'm pressing to my close, but I share with you, brothers and sisters, that there is a curse of temporal confidence. Verse 5 says, Curse is the one who trusts in man who draws strength from the flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you trust in the temporal, you tend to doubt that which is eternal. That's why the Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 to stay focused on a God that is eternal. He says that we need to concentrate not on that which is seen, but we've got to concentrate on that which is unseen. Brothers and sisters, the sin of the text, as I rush on to my clothes, is the sin of the text is that their hearts had fallen away from God. And as a result, they brought disaster to their own lives. The text says, curse God has a way of reminding us when our hearts fall away from him that everything and everyone that you trust more than you trust God will fall away from you. If you don't 
trust God. God has a way of reminding you, brothers and sisters, that those things are not to be trusted. I want to share this with you. Life can get out of hand, and life can get out of our hands, but I want you to know this. Life is never out of God's hands. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to not only stay in God's presence, but brothers and sisters, stay in the hands of God. Because if we pay a close attention to the text, the word of God tells us that there are some advantages of staying in the presence of God. Subsequently, what the text is attempting to teach us is that we are preserved in God's hands. We are preserved in God's hands. Verse 7 says, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. It's simple yet profound. Blessed is the one who trusts in God's word. Blessed uh, is uh, the Hebrew word for blessed is Baruch. It denotes a state of happiness. It denotes that you are filled with strength. And this happiness is just not to be happy, just to be happy, but this happy denotes a sense of joy. In other words, brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is, is that happiness is contingent upon the things that are around you, but joy comes from things that are within you. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world cannot take it away. Uh, brothers and sisters, we are preserved in God's hands, then, brothers and sisters, we prosper in God's hands. Uh, the text says, uh, brothers and sisters, within those few verses, it says uh, that the roots uh, reach out and, and the, uh, the, the, the roots, uh, uh, the blessed man is like a tree uh, that is planted by the rivers of water. And when you have deep roots, brothers and sisters, you are prospering in the hands of God. I want to rush to a close. Not only uh, are we preserved in God's hands, and not only do we prosper in God's hands, God expects us to produce while we are in God's hands. We pay attention to the text. Verse 8 says, It has no worries. In a year of drought, <clears throat> it has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. In other words, brothers and sisters, even during this coronavirus condition, God still expects his children to bear fruit, even in times of drought. A time in which by nature was designed to drain and to deplete and debilitate us. God enables those who are rooted in him to bear fruit. We can be productive even in times of scarcity. God gives us what we need to bear fruit even in drought. Within God's presence, he grants us power in the midst of our pain. When we are in God's presence, he grants us energy, even in the times where we are exhausted. When we are in God's presence, he gives us breakthrough, even when we are at the point of breakdown. The prophet Isaiah recognized this. That's why he said in Isaiah 40, he says, God giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases your strength. Even to the youth, 
uh, they that they might faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God can give you innovation even in a corona situation. Lord can give you sweet sensation from the tart taste of a bitter situation. And I'm going, I'm closing now, but brothers and sisters, whenever you find yourself in a bitter situation, know that God can bring a sweet sensation out of your bitter situation. And I just want to call uh, on uh, one of the queens of soul and queen, uh, brothers and sisters, I want to call on Beyonce. Beyonce, brothers and sisters, she labeled one of her albums Lemonade. Brothers and sisters, I'm persuaded that she labeled her album Lemonade because life gave her lemons, but out of those lemons, she produced something sweet. And brothers and sisters, sometimes testimony emerges from out of our trials, tears, and tribulations. You look at that album, it's one of the most acclaimed albums of her career. It's debuted at number one on the U.S. billboards, earning 653,000 with uh, additional album equivalent units, including 485,000 copies in its first week of sales. It has since then been certified as triple platinum Brothers and sisters, it was called the best-selling album of 2016. And when asked why, or when she, when asked what she wants to accomplish uh, in her next phase of her career, she said that she just wants to help somebody to understand that there is a reason for your struggle. She said, "I hope I can create art." that helps people to heal. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that you can flourish even in this time of corona. Even in quarantine, God watches you and God expects you to produce. You just gotta stay in the presence of God because when you are in the presence of God, brothers and sisters, when you are in the presence of God, God will allow, God will preserve you. And when you are in the presence of God, brothers and sisters, God will allow you to prosper. And when you are in the presence of God, God will allow you to produce. The door of the church is open. I pray that something has been said uh, that is meaningful to you. I pray that something has been said that is inspiring to you. I pray that something is said that has evoked you to live a life worthy uh, in Jesus Christ's sight. Brothers and sisters, the door of the church is open. If you'd like to join Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, uh, allow me to share with you our email, Pruitt at gmail.com. Uh, if you send us an email sharing that you'd like to become a part of the church, brothers and sisters, I will get someone to respond to you within 48 hours. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Also, brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who are visitors, those of you uh, who have logged in who do not have uh, a church home, if you are a visitor of our church in, uh, at our virtual doorstep, we welcome you and we thank you for coming. Uh, we are a church. Uh, we're striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. Well, pleasant parishioners, it's just about that time. We've had a great time in the word of God. We pray that the word of God has been 
enlightening, inspiring, and evoking. We pray that it has inspired you and encouraged you. We pray uh, that it has enlightened you to give thought to the word of God. And we pray that it evokes you to live a life that is pleasing in his sight. We're thankful again that you have come to share with us. We are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. Thank you and God bless you until we meet again.